Hey everybody, it's Chance here again with yet another episode of Proto-Violence. Um, judging from the length of the game, this will probably be the final episode as well. Um, what happened last time is we're playing a doctor, Dr. Deirdre Destrange, who has just become a supervisor of the YTDI, which is the Youth Training and Development Initiative, which takes homeless children and essentially raises them up. Um, in order to then implant with cybernetics and become soldiers, super soldiers for STOP. Um, we are doing a case study because we hope to perhaps change things from the inside. But also, this is a prequel to Malviance, so we know that's not going to happen. Um, and this place deserves to burn. Um, Let's just get right into it. Okay. So no computer this time. Crawl, all you have to do is put a paper towel or a napkin underneath your cup. Let's just start with the report. Case okay, study report. 81420 x focused study of CO458 is on hold while the subject undergoes processing. Observation of CO CO548's former squad have continued in the meantime with little to report. Without CO2's 458's presence, the classroom time is quiet and proceeds evenly. Conducted short interviews with the trainees in this cohort. Anxiety about future graduations is high. Currently seeking clearance to visit CO458 in recovery. Well, update after I've had the opportunity to do so. Dr. TJ Destrange. August 20th, 2070 X. Where could Pava have gone? The security board told me that it would be at least another week before I could meet with him again. They didn't mention anything about processing, but what else could it be? Processing science is scientific, but it could mean anything. It's If it's cybernetics, there's only so much they can do before puberty. It should be minor. Maybe even... Why am I still trying to rationalize this? I've deferred to stop in all its excuses, despite having the proof right in front of me. They want to modify children. Why? I don't know, and frankly, it doesn't matter. If they really were serving the greater good, why have they been so evasive? So secretive? I can't afford to be humble or gracious anymore. I know more about cybernetics than any other researcher in their department put together. And yet, I allowed myself to be out. I acted respectably. I never caused a scene. Because I'm the great, the strange, revered by the cybernetics community because I cared much more about Stop's reputation than the truth in front of me. I can't look away anymore, so they shouldn't either. I'll finish my reports. Thrust it in their faces, make them see what they've wrought. I'll be diplomatic, even if it means biting my tongue. At least the science they're doing is still immature. It's physically impossible for them to test mechanical limbs designed to fit soldiers on a child's frame. In Pavel's case, I guess they'll enhance his optic nerves. Still invasive and perverse, but ultimately unobtrusive to his daily life. They wouldn't risk harming a valuable subject like that. Hopefully, the worst will soon be over. Pavel's still alive. Once he's gone through processing, I'll make every effort to place him in an environment better suited for a child his age. But first, I need to think of an appropriate recovery gift. Something I can't fit in my lab coat pockets. D. Pavel's in processing. I won't get to see him for at least another week. I thought there'd be more time. He's still so... small. Is there anything you know about these procedures? Please tell me they're only skin deep. I'm sorry. 
I wish I could tell you more. Processing is kept under especially tight wraps at the YTDI. But as you've gathered, it is related to cybernetic enhancement. I should have done something. I should have used my authority, my expertise to intervene before it was too late. I just stood by the sidelines. I never even raised my voice. I know I've, I've been critical at times, but I think this would have gone ahead anyways, no matter what you did. That's just how the YTDI department is, Deirdre. Even so, your name still carries weight at stop. Your case study is, be, is compelling and detailed. And I have no doubt that little Pavel is going to be more than happy to see you uh, once again. He's out of the, 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 the. And I have no doubt that little Pavel is going to be more than happy to see you again once he's out of there. You just need to save your strength for the right time. I don't take no for an answer. Thank you, Iris. I just hope that I'm not too late. See the video? Oh boy. Interview with CO 458. August 29th, 2070X. Good afternoon, CO458. I see you're back from processing. Dr. Deidre? Deidre, not Deidre. Okay. <laughs> uh, whoops. You came! You sound surprised. I promised you I'd visit, didn't I? Yeah, but... It's been a really long week. I kind of wondered if you'd forgotten. I hope that his legs are still there. Um, it just kind of cuts off, but I'm not sure if that's just partially the, the light shading choice, which is a very detailed. I'm going to hope that's that. Um, but I have no hopes. <laughs> I have no hopes for this organization, so... Hmm? What's this on the floor? Oh, it's just a puzzle piece. Shreya was working on finishing it while I was gone. But when I wheeled back in, it got trampled on. Shri wasn't happy about that. I can imagine. Anyway, here, I got you something. I figured you'd need a pick-me-up after processing. Fruit gushies. Wow. There are some snacks from outside. I promise they taste nothing like scrip. I didn't know they made coods so colorful and tasty. Glad I picked out something good. So what have you been up to since processing? Just resting? Well, I'm trying, but Tree keeps bringing me classwork. Thought I didn't have to study anymore. That's very rude of them. I'm sorry, CO 458. I know, you know, I've been thinking. You don't have to call me that. You can call me Pavel. For the sake of the case study, I should really break protocol. Did you break protocol for the gummies? Alright, alright. I'm sorry, Pavel. Hee <laughs> hee, much better. Is having a proper name important for you? Indeed it is. You should be proud. Not just anybody gets to call me by my true name. Oh? Yeah, it's like I'm letting you use it. You and Shri, nobody else. And you're my inner circle. You get to know my secret identity. <laughs> like a superhero, huh? Exactly like a superhero. Got it. I'll keep it hush-hush then. Have you been able to leave your room since processing? No. When I said I was bedridden, I wasn't 
it wasn't ex uh ex uh, exaggerating. Yeah, that's the word. And it's really starting to bug me. It's like I've got a house cold. <laughs> you mean cabin fever? Whatever. Same thing as in any ways. Then what happened to your processing? Well, it was kind of like getting my tea cleaned. Like one moment I'm laying on this long, uncomfy table, then they've got this big light over me. Kind of looked like a spider with a bunch of eyes and legs. The light was super bright underneath, and I was surrounded by all these doctors in white uniforms and masks. I was told to count from 60, so I did, but then I fell asleep before I could finish. And then I woke up and... Um, what? What happened? I was right. Was there something wrong with your legs? Wrong? No. Nothing was wrong with them. Now, now they can give me better legs. You know, an upgrade. Better ones. Ones that'll let me run faster and jump higher. Like a real superhero, you know? Really, it's okay. If I just practice hard. I, I believe you, Pavel. You don't have to move. Please. Haha, <laughs> what the fuck? You're very brave. Do you know that, Pavel? Of course I'm brave. Brave like a hero. <laughs> Here, hide these under your pillow. Make them count. I'll be back in a week. Promise. See? See you again, Dr. Deirdre. Deirdre. I'll figure it out. I can't be a part of this. No one should be a part of this. It's not enough to leave. The fact that anything like this could happen, even in a modern facility. Maybe it was always naive to think no one, that one case study could fix stop. But if so, what then? What now? September 9th, 2070X. Case study report 793-2070X. I am absolutely appalled at the Youth Training and Development Initiative's decision to perform major implantation surge procedures on the bed. To perform major implantations procedures on trainee CO458. While it is true that synchronization rates for cybernetic implants are inversely proportional to the subject's age, this technology was only ever intended for use in adults, save for rare exceptions. The relatively static state of an adult body allows for easier construction of prostheses, and a public adult can be expected to endure the inevitable side effects of implantation better than an adult can. Rejection symptoms are not a risk, they are an inevitability. For all advancements in biotech over the past few decades, there have not been enough, enough to stop the body from revolting against artificial neurons when they are stitched to its muscles, or from realizing that the hunk of polyethylene and silicon in its skull is not part of that gray matter. Medication can suppress the body's immune response and starve off seizures, but it is a patch, not a long-term solution. Despite these facts, CO458 was approved for full transform amputation and implant preparation procedure. 
No matter how hard I try, I cannot conceive of a scenario that justifies the callous removal of two completely healthy limbs from a young child. The fact remains that CO458's quality of life has been significantly impacted for no reason beyond the YTDI's goals. If this is the level of which YTDI was allowed to conduct itself, then it is clear to me that STOP has become a little better than the organizations it once worked to squash. There is no theoretical threat or no future crime that justifies what I have witnessed. If this is what my research is now supporting, then I would rather it never have been pursued in the first place. Dr. Deirdre Destrange. September 3rd, 2070X. They took his legs. As if stripping him of his name wasn't enough, they ripped his legs off his body. Why? I can't think of any good reason for this. Pavel, suddenly that he is, said that they planned to give him even better legs. He even tried to prove it, in spite of the pain. If that wasn't enough, he hasn't even graduated yet. The last time I tried to visit him, he's been taken back in for further processing. He found out, I found out from Shiria, for, of all people. The guards say they seem to care. Asking him like um, was like asking about the garbage being taken out a day earlier. Someone else did the work, so they didn't need to know. They said this, all while looking at me with patented stop security expression. Malaise and contempt all at once. Funny how they press the kids to be seeming smilingly obedient, while the adults look like bored children. When I came back to their room, I noticed a distinct coldness in the air. Shreya looked awful. Had she been eating properly? She looked so frail. If she was to be taken to the operating table too, her chances of survival. I have to leave. Stop. And the YTDI has to go with me. <laughs> As if. What is an academic supposed to do against an intergovernable, governmental organization with unlimited resources and an ever-growing supply of cybernetic muscle? <laughs> Maybe I can follow Iris's example. The case report will be my indictment of stop. My voice should still carry enough importance to damn it on the way out the door. But if I try to make an impact on my end exit instead of leaving quietly, what will happen next? If I say anything about the way that Angie advised treating those kids, the courts will bury me, and I have to hope that Stop doesn't single me out extrajudicially. To hell with it, though. They can't expect me to be quiet after everything I've seen. Just thinking about what our marital conversations makes my blood boil. We were observing a physical education class. The kids were told to run laps to the point of exhaustion. Knowing the YTDI, they, prob they probably were forced to run a bit longer than that. Look at what we can make people do when we take them beyond the limits of humanity. Isn't it incredible? Those kids will do anything for our approval. Some part of me wants to toss them snacks just to see if they would improve their results. After she said that, she giggled as if she were mocking a fat squirrel instead of creating the most Byzantine modern army I'd ever seen. Does she think we're still friends? I have been speaking less and less to her, but she keeps talking to me like I'm responding. All the while reveals she reveals more and more of her inner workings. As soon as Pavel's healthy enough to graduate out, I'll, I'll make my move. But I'm not leaving stop without him. D. Well, it's not a surprise she ends up um she ends up bombing this place. Cause if they're just gonna destroy you anyway, you might as well actually take them down a peg. I've got my two weeks notice lined up with Pavel's estimated graduation. The moment he's out of the system, I'm taking him and leaving. Smartest thing you've said in a while. Do you have any concerns? It's possible that they won't let him graduate. Promised promises for services rendered don't mean much to people who mutilate children. And if my case study is half as explosive as I'm hoping it to be, it's not the kind of thing that stop will let circulate for long. There are plenty of people out there willing to listen. Not after I slandered an internationally beloved crime-fighting organization. We don't have friends in the PR or allies in the media. 
It would be easy to paint me as a disgruntled former employee, disappointed with a lack of direction in her career, and looking for a book deal. Sorry, Deirdre. I wish I could, I could tell you that won't happen. But allow me to offer something else. A carrot on a stick, so to speak. When Pavel gets out, and he will, you can bring him here. Oh. Iris. Once upon a time, it was a garage. It was then it was potential research lab with some liberal quarters. Now it's yours. It's no five-star hotel, but it's not too bad this time of year. There's even a river nearby. I don't know what to say. You're... You're just giving me that? What did you expect? I'm a wealthy woman with very few hobbies. I would have ended up renting it out, even if I remembered if it was there. Much better for you to get some use out of it. Thank you, Iris. I really mean it. I... I already owe you so much. The house isn't that big, you know. I'll keep it in mind. You'd better. I don't want to hear any complaints about being cramped down the line. <laughs> Iris, I'm just joking. I know you'd never do that. Stay safe, Deirdre. I'll try. <sighs> we know we went to processing again. Question mark. September 9th, 2070X. Whoa, D. Is there a fire drill going on? What? Oh, no, no, I... I was just looking for Pavel. I can't find him anywhere. Pavel? Who's... Oh. CO458. Oh, it's okay. I'm certain he's around here somewhere. I mean, it's very safe here. It's not like he could have just wandered off. Of course not. And yes, it is. Very safe here. I just... I'm... What? I'm not convinced that any of this is necessary. You're talking about processing? For starters... Uh, D, post-op is never going to look pretty. You know that. You've seen it thousands of times. On soldiers. Volunteers. Adults. <sighs> you didn't see the paces we pulled these kids out of. Filthy, overcrowded, underfunded. The facility is very clean and very well funded. That doesn't make it right. Whatever your justifications are, I don't appreciate your tone. We've been nothing but transparent with you from the beginning. We're giving you complete access to our building, our resources, even our subjects. I had to fight for this, you know? Or fight for you, you know? Then why wasn't I notified about Pavel's processing? Maybe you weren't on the right mailing list. There's no conspiracies here, D. You of all people have known exactly what the initiative's goals are. Angie, I... Look, I'm not in the mood to argue medical ethics with you in the goddamn hallway. In CO2, CO458 is in recovery. He's fine. What? How? He isn't... This isn't some back-alley surgeon for higher operation. We know what we're doing. Do you? Hmm. Sometimes you realize you're evil and you just don't care. I mean, being evil gives you power. Gives you status. Uncle? Are you? Oh, this is going to be really bad. Oh, God. Your head, your hair, your eye, it's... Dr. Deja? Pavel, wait.
I've got you. Just stay right there. Has anyone here been here to take care of you? Oh. Well... I think so. Sharia has been here at night a few times. I haven't said much though. I pretend to be asleep because I think she might be scared of me now. She's probably just worried. I'll go and talk to her, okay? Okay. I really don't want to upset her. You don't have to worry about upsetting anyone, okay? You haven't done anything wrong. How... Uh, how are you feeling? I don't know. Tired and weird. It's alright. I'm scared. My graduation is soon, and I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen. What else they'll do to me. Just close your eyes for me, okay? Pavel? Eyes oh, asleep. Bentley, not now. That was a very, very good sequence. Um, it's a shame my cat had to bust on in there. There. They're going to tear him apart. Rearrange him again and again. And not just him. And all the other trainees here. All the other children yet to come. Over and over and over. And for what? This is my fault. My research laid the foundation for this. My reputation funded this. I let this happen. I did this. There has to be something I can do. No, I, I have to do something more than writing words on a goddamn page. That's it. I'll break him out. Prevent him from graduating and burn this program down to the ground as we leave. At this point, this isn't even a call for justice. It's just plain cause and effect. September 16th, 2070X. Case study report nine sixteen twenty seventy X met with CO four five eight today. Engaged in normal conversation and activities with the subject. CO four five eight became tired shortly into the session, so the visit was cut short after about an hour. CO four five eight's temperature and blood pressure appeared to be normal than higher levels during the visit recommending an increase in immunosuppressant dosage. Recovery otherwise appears to be on pace with expected timeline. Dr. Deirdre Destrange. September 15th, 2070X. I'm about to overturn my life's work in a matter of days. I'll become a criminal. They'll have to update the textbooks. A small footnote at the bottom of the page or in the back of the indices. Dr. Deirdre Destrange went on to make multiple terrorist attacks. We in no way, shape, or form approve of her blah blah blah. Fine by me, so long as they leave my name in. A curious kid might be in search for that crazy's name, crazy lady's name on the internet. Find a case report written by her and give it a read. Better a pariah who speaks the truth than a diligent researcher who can't stand to look at it.
Maybe I have more in common with these kids than I thought. No, that's dumb. I always had the choice to do more, and I took it as much as, as, much as I thought was possible. But still... As I walk through the YTDI halls, I'm filled with nausea passing by the spots I'll rig. Though the guards do nothing but stand around and glower at the kids, they're still more combat ready than I am. If they finally catch on to my plans, they could stop me before I even rescue Pavel. I haven't feared others being able to hear my thoughts since I was in middle school. I remember feeling guilty in chemistry class as we reviewed exothermic reactions. When I realized how easily the bulge would be reapplied, I was convinced that there was something wrong with me. And it is easy. Compared to my usual work, making bombs is dead simple. I spent most of my time planning how I'd space out the fertilizer purchases. Now that I think about it, smuggling those snacks in made for a fine trial run. I have surefire proof that they won't check me. So why am I still so anxious? It's not my legacy, and it's not the process itself. Am I just afraid of being responsible for Pavel? I can take care of him with Isa's safe house. I have money. I can cook. I can learn the rest. But Shreya... The other children... Where will they go once I'm gone? Even if I could house them all, they couldn't be free to leave. Not with stop on their trail. I'd have to... I'd have just mo I'd have just moved them from one spacious cell to a cramped one. A cramped one is next to a river. I've done all the planning I can. For now, I think a eulogy to a life of service is in order. To my colleagues, the good ones, I hope you've been working from home. To the rest, you've got no right to complain about what happens next. And to stop... This is war. Plant many more seeds and I'll salt the earth. D. Are you thinking I'm... Do you think I'm doing the right thing? I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I just want to get these children out. Aren't you doing precisely that? Yes, but with many asterisks. I can't just save everyone. The numbers just don't work. And how does that make you feel? Like garbage. Where will they go? They know nothing about the real world. Kids are tougher than you think. Not tougher than stop. You'd be surprised. They'll adapt. That doesn't make me feel any better. It's unlikely anything will right now. How about a confession? I wanted all this. The recognition. The respect. The budgets. The pay. You know, before I came to stop, I took five internships in one summer. Barely got my foot out the door before I added them to my CV and never looked back. And? That we all do. That's the game we play. I liked that game. I was good at it. And there's a sizable, cowardly portion of me that doesn't want to give it up. Do you worry about Dr. Tan and the rest? Despite myself, yes. That's just the person you are. In case we don't get a chance to reconnect for a while. Let me say this. Every system falls apart eventually. For its entropy, forest fires are natural and healthy. Stop is no exception. If people are horrified by your findings and methods, that's for the best. They'll quit. They'll leave in droves. And you'll have gotten them out of a dark hole. And if I hurt people, then you'll just have to make up for it. And the kids, they'll be strong. Even if their new lives aren't cushy or clean. They'll be lives that they'll choose for themselves. Again, that's not reassuring. I know. Very little is right now. You have a lot to answer for, Dee. You're already a history maker. From here, you'll be making history in a good way. Try to remember that when you eat breakfast with Pavel. Then, this is goodbye. It has to be but you'll be in my home. I'll be there in some way. In fact, the sheets still might smell like me. Iris, gross. Apologies, couldn't help myself. But you don't need me anymore. You'll do good. You always have. Thank you. Take care now. You were always my star pupil, Deirdre. 
I trust you. I trust you'll remember me as your mentor and friend. Hopefully, when you're retired and peacefully bird watching. <sighs> Goodbye, Dr. Kai. I'll miss you. September 9th, 2070X. Hello, Pavel. Uh, oh. Good afternoon, Dr. Daedra. Feeling alright? Me? <laughs> it take a lot more than this, too. It's okay. You can tell me. Did your graduate training not go well? It was... scary. Scary and confusing. Could you tell me what happened? What the training was like? Well, they've been running the tests on the chip they put in my head. When it turns on, it's... It's like my brain squeezed into a box. Or a minecart. We can only go on the tracks. That does sound scary. Yeah. I had to do all these stupid reflex exercises, and after that they made me solve ma dumb math problems and other dumb stuff. All while they looked at me over their clipboards and data pads. And so far I've been doing good. I was doing everything they wanted, even when it felt weird. It felt like someone was looking over my shoulder. Only that the shoulder wasn't there and that somebody was me. And someone else was moving the body. Speaking for me, it wasn't like it was my body anymore. I, w I was just so scared. It was gross and strange and... Deep breaths, Pavel. A and I couldn't take it anymore. I did something bad. I was upset. I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't... Pavel? Pavel? Oh my god. I've got you, Pavel. I've got you. You're safe. I'm going to call emergency services right now. You'll be okay, I promise. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. He's on his side. There's nothing in his way. I've set a timer for five minutes. He's done. I've done everything I can. Why isn't the emergency call button working? It's worked for other trainees. I've seen it before. The maintenance team always checks it. There's something wrong with his... No. No. No, 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 no. They wouldn't. They wouldn't dare. What the fuck? Dr. Deirdre? Pavel? It's okay, Pavel. It's okay. You... had a seizure. But you're safe. And I cleaned you up. It's okay. Calm down for me, all right? You're going to make yourself sick. But, but... It'll be okay. It's over now. I'll make sure they won't hurt you anymore. I mean it. Okay. Okay. Okay.
I gave Pavel a glass of water to sip. His hands were shaking, so I hold the water for him. After that, I help him into bed, tuck him in, and wish him good night. Stroke the little amount of hair left on his head. Then I close the door behind me and walk out of the room. The door behind me clicks shut. I don't have the words to describe what I just saw. I don't need a thousand world paper to sum up what I feel. Disgust. They took away his medication. His medication. Now, in any world. Is that justifiable as a punishment? He could have died. Pavel gets hammered down because he sticks out, but any kid would do the same. He's suffering like this. There's no doubt the other trainees are. I need to talk to Angie. Now. I can't believe she's overlooked this for so long. Long before I leave, I forgot I need to look her in the eyes and try to make her see. This is going to go so badly, dear Dre. I find Angie at the bridge, gazing at the courtyard below. She looks like she did the first day I came here. She hasn't changed at all. As I approach, she turns to give me an unreadable look. For a moment, I barely don't recognize her. For a moment, part of me wants to believe she's someone else entirely. I imagine you're here to talk about CO458. I pause. That was unusually direct of her. What do you mean? It's the 21st century, D. I've got ca we've got cameras in every room. I didn't notice, but somehow I'm not surprised at all. It feels right at home with everything else I've learned about the YTDI. You're watching that whole time? She blinks. So you saw how I called for help. You saw him go into a seizure because he wasn't given his medication. We don't know that. A lot of trainees here tear taking, hate taking it. They'll put it under their tongue. That's bullshit and you know it. These are your precious test subjects. Invaluable troves of medical data. If you wanted to, you can get any do a doctor into any room of this building in seconds. What are you suggesting? It's not a suggestion. You're punishing him for what happened during his graduate training. There's a long silence. The tension in the air twists my stomach into knots. She's choosing her next words very carefully. Tasting them in her mouth, rolling them around like a boiled sweet. Nostalgia laps at me for a second, for a moment, a warm pool at the back of my mind. She used to do this before her research presentations, worrying, worrying the inside of her cheek as she awaited my feedback. Maybe you're right. But does it matter, D? She doesn't look back. Excuse me? What does it matter? Does what matters to CO four five eight matter that much? Once he passes the graduate training, he's got a stable career set up for him. He won't be in want for food, housing, or guidance. I can't believe what I'm hearing. In exchange for his legs, his brain, his individuality, individuality. What are you, a teenager? Everyone's got to grow up sometime. I bite down on my tongue. As much as I want to, cursing her won't get me anywhere. What's happening isn't complicated, D. You've gotten too attached to your re subject of research. No, you're going to blow up into a billion little pieces. You've lost sight of your objectivity. That's all. It happens to the best of us. I, you know, Deirdre, you should just push her. <laughs> push her over the edge. <laughs> Even you. She turned back to look at me, but she isn't seeing me. She's done talking. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> uh. Earlier in the day, I had printed out my case study.
I had intended to go through it with a red pen. That night, I fed it into the shredder page by page. Months of work gone in moments. It was the best I had felt in ages. October 1st, 2078, or 2070X. In a matter of minutes, I'm going to burn down my entire career. Maybe it's fitting that the planning reminded me of how I designed my first cybernetic hand, linking each step into the next like titanium phalanges. Getting to Pavel will be simple. I'll enter his room through the small door in the back. No one will suspect me, they'll think I'm conducting another checkup. Just another inane interview to pad out my case study. Escaping will be a much more complicated task. The security cameras are disabled. The safety alarms rewired. An escape route's plotted. If things go pear-shaped, there is pyrotechnics I set up ahead of time. But once I trigger the siren, I can't predict who or what'll get in my way. My heart's pounding feverishly. My brain's swirling with phases and countermeasures and backups. I'm painfully aware of every step and every breath I take. Because once I open the dorm room door, there's no going back. I still have a way out. I can leave this behind and go back to my old life. Could ties with stop quickly, retire quietly to bucolic existent with honors and accolades to my name, bury my regret and rage in the back of a well-tended flower bed. But if I don't open this door, Pavel will continue to suffer. He may not survive graduation. Even if he does, he'll become a nameless drone, a shell of a person marching through life armed with clockwork thoughts and plastic smiles. I can't abandon him. Not to that. Pavel? I'm going to come closer, okay? Dr. Deirdre? Now, listen to me very carefully. I want to give you something. Oh. Wait, is it another snack? It's better. Pavel, do you want control? Control over what? Your future. I've, I've never really thought about my future. Would you like to? You can take your time. I understand that I'm asking. Yeah. You do, Dr. Deidre. I want control. Then take this switch and press this button. As soon as you do, you'll be free. Let's go. I take Pavel by the hand and gently guide him out of bed. And his legs clack against the tiles. He wobbles. Do you need help? I ask quietly. We have a lot of ground to cover, and every second's crucial. But if he's in pain... Emma, it's okay, Pavel responds. It clearly takes him some effort, but he grins up at me. What better way to get used to these legs than a prison break? Despite everything, I chuckle. In between pulses of the siren, I hear the hurried footsteps of staff and trainees rushing down the hallway.
I take his hand and we walk through the door I came through. Neither of us look back. Back hall, the dormitory is empty. The alarm lights in the walls blink an angry red as confused personnel, log, j personnel jog past us on their way to the emergency stairwell. We walk at first. I try to keep my hammering heart under control as we round the hallway. We're still too visible. I can't help but imagine a security officer behind every door we pass. I squeeze Pavel's hand tighter and he squeezes it back. His steps are shaky. They shouldn't be. These idiots in processing couldn't even bother to calibrate the motors right. But he's stable. And in spite of everything he's been through, he's keeping pace with me. Then I see it. An imposing door with a small blinking key reader next to it. An exit out of the dormitories. Past it, there lay the operating facilities and engineering. Beyond by the shipping and receiving bay. And further still, the garage door. Our way out. Normally, this part of the facility would be swarming with in initiative personnel, but with all the alarms I triggered, all of them would have evacuated to the opposite side of the building. I don't even swipe my car. The latch clicks open when I push it. Suddenly, my steps are faster, in a heartbeat, loud, and my heartbeat louder. And before I know it, I'm running. Pavel trips on the first step. We nearly crash into each other before he corrects himself. But we run hand in hand past the operating rooms and the office and the open security shutters until, without warning, Pavel's legs buckle. They crumple over him like wet paper, sending him sprawling. I fell to my knees beside him and struggled to put him upright. What's happening? Pavel asks. I can't answer him. My eyes go to his legs. The lights are still on. The battery hasn't run out, but they're not responding to him. I can see him trying to move what's left of his legs and the cybernetics won't react. My eyes fall on the stop logo at his ankle. I look up at the shutter that we just passed and the security clan bug blinking on beside it. Shit, I breathe. D Dr. Deirdre? I almost want to laugh even as my mounting panic threatens to overtake me. Anti-theft measures. They don't want anyone taking stop property outside the building. I can hear yellowing, e yelling echoing out uh, down the hallway. We came through, distant but growing louder. They know where we are. What should we do? Cry Pavel cries. Dr. Deirdre, I don't want them to fight. Sit still. Quickly, I move to detach his legs. I leave him on the ground, sweep him up into my arms, and bolt. He clings to me, his fingernails digging into my back through my clothes. His left ink dangles out of my grasp. He's light, far lighter than he should be. As I run for the exit, I scream him close to me as I can. A security charter suddenly slams in front of me. I turn to pivot. But more come down on every door in the hallway, falling into place as heavy as tombstones. Damn it, damn it. I bite back a scream and try to focus on facts. Security's at my back. I can hear them getting closer. The combat boots on tile, heavy and hurried. With every second I sit here, panicked and paralyzed, they stomp closer to us. My eyes squeeze my eyes shut. Blow them up. Blow them up. I can feel cold steel gun barrels at my back. Cuffs. Bindings. Straight jackets. Pavel ripped from my arms. Disposed of as defective goods or reprogrammed into an ideal product. Bombs, 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 bombs. I can't bear that thought. I reach into my lab coat, pull out a second switch, and press it. Hell yeah! The explosion's ripping through the hall with a force unlike anything I've ever felt before. They tear through the shutter, blasting me with heat and smoke and debris that nicks my cheek. I run right into it as more and more explosions go off in the facility, my hidden bombs going off like exothermic dominoes. A burst of red and blinding heat sears my right side, a mistimed trigger on a misplaced wire. I push through the pain, running as fast as I can. My ears ring. My muscles scream. My throat stings. And all there is is heat and ash and pain. Until, finally... We reach the light.
believe I actually made it. Pavel, I think we're... Pavel, Pavel, oh God. Your, your arm, it's, it's all... Pavel, please, speak to me. Well, what? The sky. It's so blue. I haven't seen it in so long. You're... you're hurting. Please don't push yourself. You're already bleeding so much. But I'll live. This... I'm no longer there. I'm free now, aren't I? Yes. Yes. You are. I really liked that. Um, I thought the writing was really effective, um, and a lot of the, the 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 way the scenes were done and everything are also very good. Um, Good game. You know what? Games can be good sometimes, and that's awesome. Um, honestly, I think um, there's not really much to say because um, the, the story kind of speaks for itself in a way. Um, I think everything is like told told in such a way where it like naturally evolved, um, and I mean. Violence was the only option. Let's be real here, <laughs> you know? Um, extras, let's go. We got some CGs. The music room. Oh, that's fun. Developer's notes. Let's see. Oh, there's going to be so many like there were last time. Okay. Man, what can I say about the development of Proto-Violence? Once again, it was a super ambitious project I made for a game jam, and my very first spin-off to an original work. If you told me at the start of the year I'd, that I'd put out two games related to Caution, well, Pavel, here, and Dr. Danger, I would have never believed you. And yet, here we are. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who worked on this project beside me. You're all incredibly talented people, and your efforts have really led to this game being as good as it is. I really could not have done this without you. Another massive thank you to you, the player, for picking up this visual novel and reading it. If you've already played Malviolence, I hope Pro-Violence whetted your appetite. Since Malviolence itself is pretty light on story, if you haven't, why not give Malviolence a try and see what happens to Dee and Pavel in the future? Now to go grab some sushi for dinner as a treat. Thank you for playing! Mato. I had a blast contributing to the script. The whole team put all their all put their all into this project and it shows. Thank you so much for playing. Brian Maholland. This was the first time I ever had a posi as a position as an assistant writer, and I'm really glad it was with this project. There's an amazing team of talent here, and a very coherent manager to tie it all together. For what my input is worth, I hope you enjoy the dialogue. Set. Somehow, all these words I've written in the past month have ended up into a video game. How'd this happen? But seriously, it was incredible watching all of this come together. The entire team worked really hard to put the story together, from writing to the art to the sounds to the coding. I hope all of it was worth it. Thanks for playing. Phoebe Fishlap. Fish slap? Yeah. Um, this is my first game being brought onto a project like this, and I can't say how honored I am for the opportunity. I really hope I was able to bring some horror to this spooktober. Lilith Chambers. Thanks again for having me on for such a great and talented team. Thank you for playing and loving our collective son. Please spoil him with scented stickers, comics, and gummies. Spot. Spec. 
Just because there are no puzzles this time doesn't mean the game will go easy on you. My feels are in shambles. That being said, congratulations to everyone on the team and thank you for playing. Kigyo Dev. Thanks again for having me on as UI designer. The whole team really worked hard and I hope you enjoyed Proto Violence. Spisazzi. Thank you for playing. Working on this project was great. It was a great experience. Reyna. What can I say except pleading emoji? Then Vox, dear Trisvier. Thank you so much for having me on board as the voice of Pavel. I was really excited and honored to have a small part of Prussian's story. It was really easy. It was really incredible. <laughs> nope, not easy. It was really incredible watching the game come together from the sidelines and how smooth and organized everything seemed. I hope you enjoy the game and please listen carefully. A lot of great work went into the game sounding amazing from music to the sound effects to the mastering to directing and the voice acting. Thanks for playing. It's always fun to compose for a character that's evolving, trying to represent its current stage in life. Comes up as an interesting challenge that I always wanted to do. Hope mine and Melody's music could make you feel the story, Dorit. Rhodes and Worry remain king and queen of electronic pianos, and nothing will tell me otherwise. Nonetheless, it was great to being back to compose for our favorite little evil guy, and hope you all enjoy the story and music we got in store for you. Melody. Thank you so much for playing, dear players, and thank you, Team Malviolence. Memories are only about the past. The present time will never last. The future lies within your heart, D-Ray. Pavel before coming caution. Cut my life into pieces this is my last resort. <laughs> thank you for the wonderful beta testing opportunity, and I hope there's um, for there to be other violence series games on this talented project team puts together. Dear reader, pay attention. There's a lot of rich thought in this series of stories. Give them some serious consideration. Clunies. Thank you, Deirdre, for traveling back to the past and getting revenge on, mal on the male violence panopticon for me. Dearly, W. Brian, Caution's official, unofficial, number one lap rat, two jams running. <laughs> I just want to pet Caution on the top of his head now, please. Give him a cookie or something. Hades Town. I thought Malavalence got me at the feels before, but damn, did Proto Violence go hard at some points. I guess it makes sense now since we're seeing YTDI's misdeeds firsthand instead of indirectly. It's a big honor to have even put a minor help into be a, blah, blah, blah. It's a big honor to have even taken a minor part in helping it something in this intense on its way to its audience, even if that build was actually in great condition by the time I got it. Whatever productions. P.S. I sure hope that last line won't blow up in my face on release day. P.P.S. Pavel needs a hug. P.P.P.S. Microsoft Sam or Faust voicing fam needs acting <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Alright. So that's it for Proto Violence. Um, I, I enjoyed myself. I, I, um, again, like, I think it's partially, um, also the method of telling the story, but I think the decisions to tell the story in this way um, were really effective. Um, from the directing, to the writing, uh, to the sound design, to all of that. I thought it was all really good. Um, this, of course, was made for a game jam, so made over a short period of time. And I am really impressed with it. It's really good. I'm really happy. I played it. Um, even if it was upsetting. Um, terrorism does work. I <laughs> um, don't know if YouTube will nerf me for that. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. That's it for today. Um, um, and I'll see you guys on the next game. Bye-bye.